Hi guys, how's it going? Andy here for What Culture Wrestling. And today, let's have a nice little chat about NXT. NXT has revolutionized the idea of a developmental territory. It's a viable third brand in its own right, and a fun, wrestling-centric environment away from the main roster's sports entertainment trappings. All of this has been accomplished on Triple H's watch, and while it would be wrong to give him all the credit, he deserves a fair share. Everything that helped WWE get its first five-star match since 2011 was done with him as the overseer. So how did Triple H steer NXT to this point? Well, let's take a journey. Johnny Gargano versus Andrade Cien Almas. Now this match had the wrestling world buzzing last week. It's the first WWE match since CM Punk versus John Cena at Money in the Bank 2011 to be awarded a full five star rating from our uncle, Dave Meltzer. Both wrestlers looked like absolute megastars in this match, and they crafted a dramatic story-driven masterpiece. Nobody provokes as strong an emotional response as Johnny Gargano, who is fast becoming one of the best babyfaces in the world. When he lost, it was like your favourite football team had just lost the Champions League final, or perhaps Asda had just discontinued your favourite line of muffins. Just miserable. This was only the sixth five-star match in WWE history, and it places Almas and Gargano among elite company. Aside from the late, great Owen Hart, every other wrestler to have a five-star match in WWE is a Hall of Famer. It was a long time coming, too, because the past eight years have seen NXT go from bland reality show to one of the most cutting-edge in-ring products in the world. TakeOver is always excellent, the weekly shows are remarkably consistent, and the roster is absolutely stuffed with top talent. NXT's transformation into work-rate heaven began in June 2012. That's when FCW, which was WWE's old developmental federation, was shut down. All their operations were moved to Winter Park, Florida's Full Sail University, and WWE decided that they were going to repurpose the name of their now-defunct reality show. Now, this really was a slow process. Guys like Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt emerged as must-see prospects in 2013, but it wasn't until NXT's first ever network special in February 2014 that this became more than a little developmental promotion from Florida. Sami Zayn vs Cesaro was the first hint that Triple H was onto something special. They crafted an awesome athletic spectacle at the Arrival Supercard. Now Dave Meltzer gave this match four and a quarter stars. That's a great rating, but if you ask me, it underrates the match a little bit. This match laid the blueprint for what Triple H's dream would eventually become. The game created an environment that didn't stifle his wrestler's creativity, but celebrated it. Guys like Sami Zayn wrestled pretty much as they did on the independent circuit. And the same goes for guys like Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, and everyone else who walked into developmental at the time. On top of this, Hunter took the very un-WWE approach of harking back to the old southern wrestling style that his father-in-law reportedly hates. Shows took a basic match-promo, match-promo format, and there was no room for soap opera-style theatrics. But none of this would have worked without the right wrestlers, and WWE's signing policy under went a major transformation. No longer were the company primarily looking at NFL dropouts and fitness models. The company started looking more to the independent circuit, which saw established veterans like Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Austin Aries, and a host of others walk through the doors. They were soon joined by Japanese stars like Asuka, Hideo Itami, and Shinsuke Nakamura. And soon, those green fitness models were almost outnumbered by 30 to 35 year olds who'd already been in the business for 10 to 15 years. On top of this, Triple H allowed women to be wrestlers again, and NXT's four horsewomen were kicking out matches that compared favorably with anything the men were producing. The success of the Revival, DIY, and American Alpha brought tag wrestling back to the forefront, and on the character front, believable human beings were in, and goofy gimmicks were out. NXT came close to hitting five stars several times before Gargano vs Almas. Bailey and Sasha Banks wrestled a transcendent epic at TakeOver Brooklyn, but they couldn't hit the full five despite the match's importance to women's wrestling. The same goes for Shinsuke Nakamura's electrifying introduction in Dallas, 
as well as the Revival's many tag team classics. Meanwhile, Zayn and Neville scored four and three quarters for their fantastic match at TakeOver Our Evolution, and Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate did the same in Chicago just last year. Inevitably, the five-star curse was shattered in Philadelphia. Now, we can debate whether or not this is one of the greatest WWE matches of all time until we're blue in the face, but what isn't up for debate is Triple H's role in all of this. These matches simply wouldn't have happened without his influence, and while Triple H's main roster villainy is well earned, NXT fans owe him a considerable debt of gratitude. Is this what awaits us when Vince McMahon finally sees control and Triple H takes over? Perhaps, but it's important to remember that NXT is a niche wrestling product. There's no guarantee that casual fans would take to this style in the same way as developmental audience, but after years of constant frustration and stagnation on Raw and SmackDown, surely some of its innovations have got to be worth a try. Whatever happens, we'll continue to enjoy the pseudo super indie promotion that Triple H has built down in Florida, and we can't wait for the brand's next five star match. But what do you think? Is Gargano versus Almas worthy of the praise? And how much credit do you think Triple H deserves in all of this? Sound off in the comments section below, and if you're hungry for a more comprehensive look at NXT's history, head on over to shop.whatculture.com and grab yourself a copy of Michael Sidgwick's fantastic book, Development Hell, The NXT Story. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And once again, I've been Andy for What Culture Wrestling, and I'll see you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below. And if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though. But it might be.